All right, so based on everything that we've gone over and everything that I have still that I haven't gone over yet and documents that I haven't even put on this presentation, I've come up with this deductive argument. Now, um, of course, this isn't where we're going to move into the future, but based on what we know right now, just mouse models and petri dishes, uh, and a, a pilot study, a pilot clinical trial that had, I think, nine patients with recurrent GBM. Uh, and we're not going to be, I mean, of course, we can use this for recurrent GBM patients, but the goal here is to be able to catch GBM early on and find some that aren't recurrent because uh, we don't want somebody that has a lot of roots. Not so much we don't want somebody, we don't want people to get to the point where they have a lot of stem cells already established to where we, when they have a recurrence, it's going to be harder to be able to get rid of that one. So the idea, of course, is to initiate or activate the CB1 receptor up here top left, cannabinoids, activating the CB1 receptor, creating ceramide, which stresses out uh, the endoplasmic reticulum. And all this basically goes downscale or downstream to autophagy down here. And then autophagy, or I should say apoptosis, is downstream of autophagy. Now these come up here, the classical chemotherapeutic drugs, which is what I had, the TMZ, temozolomide, or TM, or Temidar, I mean. So temozolomide or Temidar, Temidar is what we know it as, temozolomide is of course the uh, pharmaceutical name. But anyway, so temozolomide, or the cancer, or yeah, anti-cancer drug for brain cancer specifically, it's not intravenous, it, because intravenous has trouble, but, passing the uh, blood-brain barrier because it's not a uh, fatty like lipid substance and cannabinoids are so they can squeeze through the blood-brain barrier anyway so what it's trying to do is do the exact same thing that cannabinoids are trying to do the issue though is that this is chemotherapeutic as if that's can even be those that's an oxymoron in itself chemo and therapeutic chemical therapeutic so anyway coming down here Autophagy, apoptosis, same thing over here. Autophagy, apoptosis, cancer cell death. So, this is these are basically the same exact things that are showing this one that has the uh, chemotherapy aspect. Then this is from another study that I've actually already gone over, maybe have, and this just shows the CBRs uh, would be cannabinoid receptor. There's the same thing, ceramide. Um, I don't see the endoplasmic particular even though I know that that's how it gets it. But anyway, oh yes, ER stress on the endoplasmic particulum leads to autophagy right there. Autophagy to apoptosis, apoptosis to tumor cell death. So this slide is basically just to show that these, we know the mechanisms here. We know that there are also more mechanisms that we're going to learn about, especially with CBD. CBD essentially causes or creates autophagy and apoptosis. Um, down regulates proliferation, uh, cell cycle arrest, all those different types of things. It's an anti-angiogenic, and so we want to make sure that we study that. That's not included here. Uh, CBD does not activate the CB1 receptor, just THC does. Anyhow, the, a deductive argument is in an argument where it doesn't matter if the premises are uncomfortable, so long as they're true. It's, it's The argument is based on the points made and if they are true then the conclusion logically follows whether we like it or not whether it makes sense to us or not the points are factual based on the premises and then like i said the conclusion follows as and it's true so we know that whenever it really comes down to it we don't have to get into marijuana or cannabis we can really just look at how do we activate the cb1 receptor we're just looking for agonist an agonist is the opposite of an antagonist so uh Basically, any kind of agonist of the CB1 receptor would activate it and produce these mechanisms or produce this outcome within the enzyme of a cancer cell, specifically, selectively. It just so happens to be that cannabinoids also, as well as anandamide, activate the CB1 receptor. So the premise one is that cancer cells express a specific receptor on their cell walls called the CB1 receptor. Um, in the parentheses, that, those cancers are what's listed on GW Pharmaceuticals, anti-tumor effects of cannabinoids, I think. Uh, either way, I'm going to have it on there. Um, I think, oh no, phytocannabinoids in the treatment of cancer. That specific patent, I believe, has the, this list of prostate, breast, skin, glioma, lung, colon, uh, 
Is that bone or lymph? Yes. So bone and lymph metastasis, that's leukemia um, or lymphoma. So premise two, activation of the CB1 receptor by an agonist induces cell death in cancer cells by way of autophagy and apoptosis, which is exactly what we're talking about right here, autophagy and apoptosis. Coming back over here. Premise three, endogenous and exogenous cannabinoids are agonists and as such activate the CB1 receptor. So that's exactly what I just said a minute ago, endogenous anandamide, which is the chemical that induces apoptosis via the CB1 receptor. And let me see what else, anything else to say on that part. So premise one is factual. Premise two is factual. Premise three is factual. So we know that on the cancer cells, there's a CB1 receptor. Activation of the CB1 receptor causes autophagy and apoptosis. Endogenous and exogenous cannabinoids activate the CB1 receptor. Conclusion, cannabinoids, exogenous and or endogenous and exogenous induce cancer cell death through the biochemical mechanisms given in premise two, right above here, premise two, and it's that's concluding, oh, this has happened before. Why does it do this to me? We're gonna get back straight right here somewhere. We're gonna find this again. You see how much data is right here. I'm not gonna back out of this video. So anyway, uh, conclusion, cannabinoids, endogenous and exogenous, induce cancer cell death through the biochemical um, mechanisms given in premise two, prostate, breast, skin, glioma, colon, long bone, or lymph metastasis. So we're not looking at this as in human clinical trials, but these are all what we have right now. This is the most recent data that we have. And so based on what we have, we can go premise one, premise two, premise three, conclusion, cannabinoids treat cancer cells not just because it says this but I would say this is because each one of these things that I do say are based on studies that represent in their own cells <coughs> excuse me that cannabinoids treat cancer cells but this is an all the more effective argument to make because each one of these premises is true as of right now and so using this, somebody's going to say, oh, well, we can't use that as, as something. So if somebody says that we can't use it, we need to use what we do have right here to further the science in human trials. And I'm just looking forward to someone taking this seriously. And that's why I make these deductive arguments and have pieced together other philosophical points, uh, legal points, legal matters, then I want to be able to address certain claims of the opposition, being the DEA, Department of Health and Human Services, National Institute of Cancer, National, National Institute of Health, and then of course Texas legislators. So anyway, I wanted to make this video. I'm chilling, just hanging out in the car. This is kind of like my studio, so to speak. That way uh, I get some sound barrier. So I figured I'd play a little bit of hip-hop in the background to give us a little bit of head bobbing while, while we're figuring this stuff out. And yeah, so... Have a good one. Share this one, of course. Get a screenshot. And got any questions, hit me up. And holla.